So Josh, you recently were telling me about the entire like method of smart notes and I got excited about it and I started learning about Zettelkasten and Obsidian and all this cool stuff. I read your your blog post that goes into this and I ended up with some questions and I figured instead of just asking you, maybe we should record it and see if we can share this with uh, with others. T tell me a little bit more about smart notes. Like what is it and how does it help you? Like if, if someone's interested in this, like what's the payoff for them if they were to go down this road? Prior to smart notes. So, you know, truth be told, I actually came across this, the book, how to take smart notes. Um, when it first came out, I believe it's in 2017, my manager recommended it to me and said, Deke, you should really check this out. And the word note completely turned me off to reading it because I've never <laughs> taken notes. I, I actually never read it a single assigned writing in high school. So I, I didn't even like to read <laughs> in my past life. Um, but what really uh, pulled me in was I was getting, I didn't have any way to retain the knowledge that I was uh, accumulating. And I was, my my reading has become pretty proficient, so I can read fairly quickly. I don't speed read um, by any stretch of the imagination. But as I was writing, like I kept trying to pull books off my shelf and find highlights or pages that I tagged. And so I, I realized I needed this way to um, maintain some kind of a knowledge base. And so just the idea of being able to take notes that I had written and as knowledge accumulated by my interest and then being able to turn that into an artifact like a book because writing has now become a, a good central part of my life. I just I felt like I needed some kind of knowledge management system, and that's where I fell into smart notes. Um, but I wanted it, you know, being in the, the tech industry, I didn't want to have this, you know, uh, physical notebook, this physical slip box or any index cards seemed kind of silly when we have all these fancy technology gadgets. And of course, you know, I took a, a leap right into um, um, Obsidian. I've used Rome as well, but Obsidian is what I've kind of stuck with for a number of reasons. But that's the beginning. And and I think as as a lot of people describe this method and and the benefits of it, uh, oftentimes the concept of a second brain comes up, and 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 I think it's that whole notion of being able to find links, find associations, and and find context among different types of of information that you either wouldn't be easy to find otherwise, or you maybe you wouldn't discover uh, in any other event. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean that's the whole problem that I've had with just keeping any kind of a note prior it's it's usually this stack that just becomes a hot mess that you throw away whether that's <laughs> ever note one note or a notebook and right. so i was really interested that was kind of the hook that got me into obsidian as you can see here in the graph like this is um now i can visually see all these things that have started to link um between notes right so, kind okay. of like a database you know and tables and data and that so i think there's a lot of really good content available on the web that sort of talks about the mechanics, the setup, the origin, uh, the purpose even of, of smart notes and Zettelkasten. And but what I wanted to find out from you is like, what does a day in the life look like, or perhaps a week in the life look like? How does information flow through these different pieces? And, and yeah, how do you promote information from say a daily note all the way into a permanent note? I'll do my best. So this is okay. definitely something that I am I am stumbling through uh, with both shoelaces tied together, it seems. <laughs> um, but usually for me, it starts with a daily note. So I have this daily note up here. And really I, what I use, what I refer to this as is a scratch space. You know, like we all, computers have a scratch space completely reserved on their hard drive for when their memory bleeds over and they need some extra space to store relevant data. And I it just dawned on me, I was like, this note taking system needs that as well. And that's the purpose of the fleeting note. So if we just create a new uh, fleeting note here, we'll just say it's for tomorrow. We'll just jump to the future. And is that what the 19th, 17th? Yep. Um, there we go. That's what I do. There's a shortcut that you can do to, to create a new note. But anyway, this is what I do. And I actually am using this as my planner as well, but we'll put that aside. Uh, but in here, what I'll typically do is I'll do shallow tasks. And then I'll kind of create a checkbox, you know, task one, et cetera. But then I also have this notes. So throughout my day in meetings like we've had when we have a, a virtual coffees, uh, I actually have a note up, my daily note. And I take any, I use just a hyphen, like a, a, a numbered list. So if you've seen the preview, it just is a bullet. And I just take notes. I take notes while we're in conversation. And it's a completely zero, like, um, 
barrier to entry for taking them, whether I'm at a one-on-one with my manager or at a, a quarterly mentorship meeting, like I have this note open and I'm taking notes or if I'm even reading something for a PR and I find like a little snippet of advice that a mentor or someone in the PR gave me, I put it in here as a, just like to reduce any kind of friction in getting that information written down. I don't so worry about- So you're not thinking about those. where to put it, yeah. how to categorize it, yeah, any of that stuff. Right, yep, it's just take the note. And that's the first place that I do that. So that that's usually, you know, the things that random ideas that pop in your head. So if I had a really good idea for maybe a podcast episode or a blog post, I put it in here first. So it's it's a catch all for everything with zero friction. Um, that's the daily note. So like the workflow flow from there is at the end of the day, I review these and I move if there are tasks, I move them into the next day's tasks if they're um, but if there are notes and I want to like maybe there was a it sounded like a brilliant idea. When I wrote it down and I reviewed it at the end of the day and it's not really, then I leave it alone. But sometimes they're worthwhile. And what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll use that as um, like the foundation for a new note. So like I just talked about the idea of scratch space. So I could just create a new note like this. Um, and if I click into that, now I have this new okay, note. Okay, now something just happened there. So you just sure. did a double bracket around words and then what you clicked on it? Yep. So that's a link in Obsidian. So that's how you okay. link different things. Um, and what I'll do is I, I avoid trying to organize the information at all costs until the end. So I have this idea of scratch space and I want, you know, like I wanted to capture it. Maybe it's a good, I actually wrote this in my, for my newsletter last week. So that's where this is coming from um, to give you kind of the flow. But then I would go in here and I would type like, what was it that I was thinking about with scratch space? And I could put in the verbiage that I, I just talked about. Um, from there, I would put it into a permanent note. Um, and so like that goes into your slipbox folder. And it's been really hard for me not to create more folders. <laughs> just this is admin. <laughs> me twitches with this flat structure of notes. Right. Um, but this is the trickiest part about taking smart notes or using the Zettelcast method is beginning you don't have any structure. So I like to think of it as like trees of knowledge. And really, every note, it says there's a quote in the in the How to Take Smart Notes that every note is eventually written in reference to some other note. And what they mean by that is you have these sequences here. And so there's this psychology, like maybe the scratch space would fall under the psychology. We could do that for the sake of an argument. So it would be a one. Um, it's not behavioral addiction, so we'll move on from that. So maybe, you know, after all these little snippets that I have here, I would do maybe one C R one D. So this would be like out, outline notation. So you have yeah. one and then you indent and it's a, and that way. Yeah. So these sequences build up with an infinite number of letters and numbers. Um, but really what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out where does this knowledge that I just obtained fit into my knowledge base. And it and then in that process, you have to one integrate it and then it bumps into other ideas. And that's what I've, the value that I've gotten the most from this is that these notes just don't go somewhere and get tagged with, productivity or something and I never see them right. again. I have to constantly filter through them and uh, every time I take a new note and figure out where this fits in. And so that's one pathway from a fleeting note to a permanent note where you would uh, do this. But it, I mean, this takes some time because this probably isn't a good space for it in psychology. It's probably kind of a maybe a productivity type thing where, you know, like, cause the idea is that you have this empty space where you can just dump extra memory extra information. So, so the concept behind what you're trying to capture is that um, you have a, a note space somewhere that maybe you write stuff and it's not permanent and, and we kind of need to build a discipline of being able to have something like that. Is, is, is that the, the concept or you're trying to document? Session of organization of organizing and having everything permanent because uh, okay. in our digital world, like every with infinite capacity to store things, there's this need to have everything permanent. And okay. not everything should be permanent. You know, it's kind of the, I should, you know, if we have more time, I would write down, write down the note or I could, I could pull the reflection from the newsletter. Um, but yeah, the general idea there is, um, yeah, that where we don't need information doesn't always have to be permanent. It can be ephemeral. Okay. And, and so the, the, the benefit here would be you would write that note out and then you would link it to something else using mm -hmm. Like this, the backlinking uh, features of, of Obsidian. Yeah. Or so here, let's just check this out. So if we, I realize like this doesn't actually fit in psychology. I don't even have one for productivity. So if I look through all my lists, you know, I ended at five. 
So my next broad level category or tree of knowledge would be productivity because that's a pretty high level. Uh, and so it forces you to think when you take the note, like going up some kind of a knowledge structure, what would this fit into? Right. Okay. And it doesn't fit into anything that I have. So maybe it's uh, productivity. We'll just do that. And then what you do here is let's just move this into the slip box. And then we'll go back to scratch space and we'll rename this. Now, just as an aside, the whole sure. term uh, of a slip box really confounded me for a little bit until you realized that it's just Dr. Lumen, <laughs> who, who originated this technique, had three by five cards that he put in the long boxes that you would slide out of these cabinets and thereby being a slip box. But, you know, when you look at this digitally, you th think slip box. What in the world is that term? What does that even mean? It's just so, a folder. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. You don't even, some people didn't even have the, the folder. My o OCD was just folder organization and being in tech. <laughs> like I need, I needed the folder for some reason. Right. So anyway, what you do here is like, now that I have a, a, a topic underneath productivity, I would link it in here and productivity becomes an index. So scratch space. So, okay. and that's another thing is you don't have a holistic view ever of the slip box, just of top, like just of um, top level topics. Right, because if you did, it would be this massive index that really would lose meaning over time because it would be so big anyway. So right. That, yeah, okay. I like to think of it as when I'm trying to figure out where the note fits, I like to think of it like a library where you have psychology as this section over in the back right corner of the library and productivity is maybe, you know, a few bookcases down the left, but then you go inside productivity or, or psychology and there's different genres inside that genre. And that's how I start to like mentally just think through where this information would fit. Um, gotcha. Okay. So that's, so, uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so uh, there are other like concepts and terms that a, as people sort of get into the, this method pop up a little bit. And I was just wondering, like, I see you have a reference folder there. Um, well, how does that play, play into the. Sure. Into so the workflow? reference is, so I said I had the daily note for all the, um, just like a and random ad hoc things that pop up. Well, the, the reference is whenever you're taking notes in reference to some specific literature, typically it's a book. So if you go in mine, um, you'll see that I'm, I've, I'm reading two books currently and I've read a couple. There's some meeting notes in here too. I'm trying to figure out still how, where to put everything, but clear technical writing is a book that I am reading and I'm actually using this reference book as um, to go through the exercise. It has a number of exercises in it. But yeah. as I go through it, I'm capturing these ideas in here. And so the idea of a literature note is you're not copying word for word all the quotes. What you're doing is you're trying to um, compress and become more concise and to synthesize the information in your own words. And so here is about three paragraphs that I compressed down into this, like words that attempt to reinforce a feature or attribute of a technical word are often unnecessary. They were a, bit, a little bit more verbose in that explanation, but that's the single most important thing that I took away from the chapter. And so that's a good um, literature note that could then be turned into a permanent note later. But the reference notes in here are all, it could be a YouTube video, it could be a blog post article. Um, a lot of people there's some fancy things you can do with like Readwise where you can, you know, highlight and then export those highlights straight into here. So if you have some kind of an e-reader, you can actually automate some of these, which I would um, warn against in some ways, because like the whole point is to make sure that you're really understanding that repetition is important. Um, another a book that I'm reading right now is uh, Irresistible. Uh, I want to so, dive into oh. something that you, you mentioned there a moment ago. Yeah. And that was, you said that you'll, maybe turn this into a permanent note. And so does, is what you're saying, you're not going to take the whole book review and create a permanent note out of that. You would take the concept of that, that sentence that you had highlighted and maybe right. expound on that or add to it in other ways. And, and that would be your permanent note. Yeah. So, okay. um, so this is part one, removing redundancies. And I actually did take a permanent note. We can take a look at that. So if we expand technical terms, there's a number of sections. I think there's five sections. And I did that with each section. I summarized whatever it was trying to teach me. Um, and then so if we just I think it's. What, is, what did I call them? Re removing. 
remove redundancies. So okay. I, I created a permanent note that I'll probably append to as I read this entire part of the book because I, this permanent note was taken with my understanding of just one chapter. Okay. And so here's practical ways that you can apply that concept in your right. permanent note. Gotcha. Okay. And so instead of like going through the book and, and scrolling through all that, what I'm trying to do is really compress like what are the main lessons that each of those chapters was trying to teach me? And I put that up here. Uh, and then, you know, I copied some of those literature notes and revised them a bit to make sure that, you know, I under I have more context to quantity words. OK, per se. Uh, but now I have one note that kind of summarizes you know all the lessons in that book book about removing redundancies in my technical writing. OK. Now, I see some people talk about the pros and cons of tagging. And especially in the context of what we're used to on Twitter and Instagram, where we add like a billion tags to one post and all this kind of thing, creating these really generalized buckets seems to be a bad idea. But do you use tags at all in your content or do you just use the indexing and the smart linking to make the connections? I use linking for all the connections. I do, instead of having the inbox, which I laid out in the article, I, I use to do tags. And so that's how I filter so if you go over here to tags, I don't have any to-dos, which is good. But that's okay. the reminder. I use those to pinpoint the areas in my knowledge base that I need to review at the end of the day. So I use okay. those to, use to just mark. Because if I just put it in the inbox, like it gets cluttered and I have to move files around, where if I just tag, I can right. have the specific line of the note that I wanted to elaborate on, so to speak. But um, yeah, that seems a lot more effective because I was getting lost in your article when you were talking about moving files back and forth. And I was like, okay, well, are you copying? Like, like for instance, you had your your daily note um, and, and you, let's say you wanted to make a permanent note out of whatever concept that you want to expound on. So at that point, are you, you cutting and pasting that content from your daily note into the permanent note? So there's no redundancy when you search or are you keeping that in your daily note and then linking it over to your permanent note. I usually take that, con typically the note itself becomes the name the, or okay. the keyword of the note, um, but I do copy it in. So you're not removing it from one place and relocating it to another. Right, yeah, I just, okay. I, um, it's moved in, but then that that note inside the daily becomes a link and then the context just goes straight into the, the note itself. Okay, and, uh, a lot of this seems like it would be really useful for personal stuff as well as business. Do you intermingle any of that together or is this strictly for your professional activities? Uh, all of it's in one bucket for me. Is it? So okay. I have, yeah, I have everything in the single vault. So you can see you know, like the book uh, Irresistible that I was mentioning earlier. This is a book that I'm reading for research for the book that I'm writing that's outside of my quote unquote day job responsibilities. Um, but then you see, you know, like some meeting notes from the SEO office hours that I thought were really interesting that I had turned into permanent notes. Um, and writing better docs was a, a video that was done at dev camp. And so there's definitely a mix. Gotcha. And I've actually found a lot of value in the overlap because I was reading irresistible and I came across the idea of, um, we'll just open it up. Stopping rules. So stopping rules are these things where you, uh, so like you say you're in a, you're in target and, and a, someone brushes up against you. There, I think there was like a 60% chance that you're going to exit the store within the next 10 minutes. And it, they found because it's a stopping rule, it, it stops people from browsing. Whereas if we create more space in the stores, people will browse longer. But technology is actually a disruptor for stopping rules uh, for work and a, a lot of other things like online shopping, because now that convenience is in our pocket. We don't have these cues. We don't have these physical boundaries to stop us. We don't have these. We don't have the janitors uh, locking the doors on us if we work till eight <laughs> o'clock. Right. And so I was like, oh, this is a great concept that completely applies um, to to work. And you know, another good one is money and and a credit card, which Dave Ramsey talks about all the time. If you follow his total money makeover, he suggests that you use cash, and the reason is because you abstract it. So mm. that whole idea I took. You know, it was a, probably a good 30, 40 pages in Irresistible. I, I try to condense down into this uh, premise. Nice. And so what does that look like in your life now? What's what's a stopping rule that you've implemented? Uh, I don't have a smartphone, so that's a pretty good stopping rule. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that would do it. Yeah. 
Well, this is awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to to go over all of this with me. Uh, I, I it's helped me out a lot, and I hope others get the the same value out of it. Well, thanks for asking good questions because it's sometimes it's hard to articulate things that you're learning. And and yeah, this is very much in flux. This is not a fully fleshed out thing, but I hope that it helps uh, whoever is out there wanting to implement smart notes because it's it's made a huge impact uh, on my workflow and productivity. So happy to share. Awesome. We'll have to do this again soon sometime. Looking forward to it. Thanks.